Alright guys, welcome back to Building a Gaming PC Episode 3, I think. This is the final episode. As you can see, we, picked up, we finally picked up the motherboard right here. And as I told you guys before, I may have grossly overspent on it, but that's okay. My dad paid for it. <laughs> Anyways, I paid for the rest of the other computer parts, but uh, this one was special. I wanted this one, this specific one. Uh, this is the Z68 chipset from Asus, uh, the Maximus 4. Um, so yeah, as you can see, it has a red interior and a nice red finish. But other than that, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the camera down or position it in a place that you can actually see me build it. And then we'll do like a fast forward, super fast what up, build up of during the entire time. And that's pretty much it. Alright, so I'll see you guys during the actual building process. Alright, here's just another close up of the board. Um, what I really like about this board is the large heat sinks and the nice red finish just because I'm a black and red kind of guy and This is gonna be my workspace for probably the next like 10 hours of my life <laughs> I kind of have my computer just in case I run into any issues search the internet for tips and stuff And I will be discharging my style of electricity by touching my Cooler Master half X and as you can see we're on a solid uh, wood surface we will not be building a computer on a carpet a la C Nanners. <laughs> no hate to C Nanners, but I don't know what he was thinking there. But anyways, uh, I'm just going to put the camera down and let the video and doggies are ravaging <laughs> each other. And we're going to just keep building. Alright, first step. Install the processor. This is the most essential part. I guess of a computer, the brains of it. Alright, what we got here? Crappy uh, stock cooling, which th which has thermal paste well placed inside of it. So yeah, we don't need that. What we do need is this baby right here, 2600K discharge. Let's get this in here. Oh, we'll don't drop it. All right, guys, fast forward. Here is the final build. Um, it took a while. This is actually a week later since I actually showed you uh, the motherboard. It didn't take me a week to build it. But it took me a couple days to get everything together, get everything working. Then another couple days to get configured to exactly how I wanted it to, making sure that all the components are working at optim optimum levels. So this is the final build, as you can see. Um, this is everything's connected to the Maximus 4. And the Maximus 4 actually has a very convenient switch right there at the very back that allows you to start it without uh, with just a push of a button. So as you can see right there, there's also a reset button there. I'm kind of, the, that's the uh, GPU firing up right there. I'm kind of giving you guys a little bit more light using this uh, floodlight that's used to heat up my turtle's water tank. <laughs> Don't worry, he's perfectly fine. But anyways, all right, let's get into here. So this, like I said, everything's connected to the motherboard. And you, I tried my best with the wiring, but it's not 100% how I want it so far, uh, just because there will be a little bit more components that I will be getting. So this video is actually part three or four. I was planning to make this the final build, but it actually isn't. So um, first things that's going to change is that you're going to be, I will be swapping out the Hyper 212. I actually said it right this time, uh, which is my aftermarket heat sink which is an awesome heatsink. It only cost me 28 bucks and it's doing the job perfectly. Uh, as if, if you're wondering, I'm running the 2600K right now at 4.6 and a lot of you guys, when I first said that I was gonna try to get it to five, you thought I was crazy using this aftermarket uh, cooling system. Uh, you thought I'd completely blow up my, <laughs> my CPU, but combined, this cooler uh, cooling system combined with the uh, the Maximus, it was very, very easy to get it to 4.6. I actually am running it on default settings suggested by the motherboard. I actually have not gone into the BIOS and tweaked anything else. This is on 4.6 on default settings, so uh, I have seen no problems getting this thing to 5 if I actually tweaked it a bit. But this uh, heatsink is coming out, mainly because I don't like how big it is. Um, I'm going to be switching to... Uh, Corsair H80, which is uh, which is a water cooling system kit, uh, and yeah, the main reason for that is just I want to see a little bit more of the computer, and not see the gigantic heat sink in the middle. 
So closer look, we have the Ripjaws, uh, Ripjaws X RAM or DIMS, whatever you want to call it. And the fans are spinning nice and coolly. Uh, I, I guess I can turn on the LED for <laughs> for the front 200 millimeter fan. And the, there's a, another side 200 millimeter fan on the, the panel that's missing right now. Uh, Cooler Master pretty much went all out with all with the, all the fans and the cooling system, so everything stays nice and stable. Uh, my CPU right now, like I said, the 212 is an awesome fan. It's at 4.6 and only at 40. 5, 44 degrees, which is more than reasonable at 4.6 gigahertz. So, like I said, five should be easy with this thing. But I still will be upgrading to an H80. And uh, you're probably wondering why am I upgrading to the H80 instead of going to the H100, which is the larger of the two uh, aftermarket cooling. And the reason for that is um, the the thing with the H80 with the H100 is it does. From what I read, as you can see, there's two fans right there at the very top of the computer. Well, there's not two. Uh, there's one. Corsair only provides you with one 120 millimeter fan, even though the top of the case does support two. Um, the, this, I'm not 100% sure. From what I've read, it, this case does not support the 240 millimeter radiator that the H100 requires. So you actually have to mod the case a bit or rest the fans on top of the cooler, which I really don't want to do. So I'm probably just going to go with the H80, which is only 120 millimeter, which will go in place of this fan right here. So yeah. Um, other than that, I'm also missing the, the uh, GPU cooling system that extends, uh, that extends right back here. I don't know if you can see me pointing or not. I'll probably put that in a little bit later. Um, but yeah. And other than that, uh, what we got here is... So solid state drive here. Let's see, solid state here, terabyte, one terabyte here of a regular HDD. Uh, Corsair 1050. Um, once again, it's more than enough watts that I will ever use, but it's a good brand and pretty much gets me ready for everything that I personally need if I ever want to switch to NVIDIA cards and go SLI. And the only one complaint that I have on this board is that the front panel USB header cable uh, runs to the very back end of this case, uh, to the left hand side. I would have preferred it to come to the right side of the mud board at a right angle, uh, just like the saddle cable, the saddle cables are right now. Um, the actually the ASUS Rampage, the 1366 socket GPU uh, motherboard comes at a right angle. Uh, I just like it because it creates less clutter right here, but what can you do? I don't know if you can see that. It has a nice sexy Republic of Gamers illuminated LED right there, which is another reason why I want to get the H80, just because it shows more of my PC and instead of just seeing a gigantic heat fan, especially since the half x case only, it's only clear, the screen's only clear to like this portion, like the top portion of the case. And overall build experience, uh, my overall build experience uh, went as good as I could have possibly gone for a first time builder. Um, my main mistake is that, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, if I can get a close up without hitting this fan right here. Let me just stack myself quickly. Um, there is a Bluetooth um, module right there that I had to, I forgot to put in right away. And you have to attach that to the motherboard before you slide it in and lock it down then attach all your other attachments. So after I had gotten everything attached, I noticed that was there and there was no way to fit it on without taking the entire thing out. So uh, that sidetracked me. Had some issues, but on the hardware front, that was pretty much all the issues, even though it was basically my fault. Everything else was mainly just uh, software and driver issues. Uh, I spent good probably 12 hours trying to solve an issue with the driver on the GPU side which is a uh, Radeon 6970. Um, main issue is that when I actually had I had some other BIOS issues too I had to install Windows three times on the SSD so that really sidetracked me but I eventually got my main issue with the um, with the video card is that I had what I did was I updated the drivers then installed the buy then I upgraded the BIOS on the motherboard uh, which is something that you don't want to do 
Uh, so that cost me about probably six hours of actual tinkering around with the drivers and everything. What you really want to do is you want to upgrade your BIOS first on your motherboard, then upgrade the drivers on the on the GPU. I know it's uh, it's, a, it's one misstep that cost me many many hours, but yeah. So uh, the reason why this is three or four, like I said, um, gonna be switching over to a water cooling system. I'm gonna be also giving you. Uh, getting two red LED 120 millimeter fans and another 200 millimeter fan for the side panel of the case and I might go with some sort of a lighting rods or something for the case just so I can stare at it pretty and look at how much money that I have spent on this thing <laughs> which may have been a little bit too much but whatever but yeah other than that uh, wire management it's not the best uh, it's not the worst from what I've seen it'll probably get better once I get all the other parts that I want and my overall experience building, it's, it's been a pretty fun experience. Um, the only thing I can say is that if you're a gamer and you're in, in, anyone interested in technology, you should at least build one PC one time in your lifetime. Uh, not only that it will give you a central knowledge for PC components and help you upgrade uh, with a little bit more efficiency in the future, um, it's just... Uh, it's just really fun, especially like when you get everything installed, there's no better feeling than booting it up for the first time than having everything working. Although you will probably spend several angry hours with the drivers and the software. Uh, but if you've already built a PC in your lifetime before, then what I suggest to you is just, if you're building a PC from scratch, uh, just pay the extra 50 or whatever have you, $30 for the store to do it. Uh, that way you can uh, get all the issues, they'll deal with all the issues for you and everything will be done underneath warranty and you, if there's a faulty part then everything just gets switched out right away. Uh, I had so many issues with the GPU that I actually thought that it was a faulty one. Um, I went into the store and told them what I was, I experienced, ex uh, what I was experiencing and they, they told me to RMA it. And But I decided that I'd just give it one more shot when I got home and then I just had to switch around the BIOS. Uh, installing the upgrading the BIOS first then installing the the update of Catalyst 11.8, which is the Sapphire or the AMD uh, drivers. But yeah, so yeah, this is part three or four. I'll be back in several weeks once I get more money to buy all the little bit of upgrading that I want to do just for aesthetic value. So yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully you're enjoying this PC build. And I will see you guys next time for part four. All right, peace.